My dearly beloved, as I had mentioned before Mass, today's Mass is that of St. James the Greater, one of the Twelve Apostles, and the Feasts of the Apostles outrank the Sunday, so that when their feast day falls on a Sunday, we have the Mass of the Apostle. And that is because they were handpicked by our Lord, made His first bishops, and given the mission to spread the gospel to every creature, to spread the gospel to the whole world. Father Faber even goes on to say that it would be temerity to think that there is any saint greater in heaven than the twelve apostles. That is, with a few exceptions, obviously our Blessed Mother. And if we look to Holy Mother Church in her liturgy, in the litany of the saints, she places St. John the Baptist and St. Joseph ahead of the apostles on the list of the saints in the litany. But the apostles are very great saints because, as I said, they were chosen by our Lord and they cooperated with grace. Yes, we know that during the public life of our Lord, before the completion of His public life and the descent of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost, we know that they were often very petty, and argued among themselves which one was more important. And even James and his brother John went with their mother to our Lord and got her to ask him that they could sit on his right hand and on his left in his kingdom so that they would be ahead of the other apostles. And our Lord said to them, Can you drink of the chalice that I must drink? And they said, Yes, we can. And he went on to say, you indeed shall share my suffering, shall drink of my chalice. But as far as sitting on my right hand and on my left, that is for those for whom it has been designated by my Father. Well, the apostles did indeed drink of the chalice, all of them being martyrs. But insofar as sitting on his right and his left, our Lord told the apostles, you shall sit on twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the apostles are indeed great saints and we must invoke them, honor them, pray to them, and ask them to help us to persevere strong in the faith in our own times. So what do we know about St. James? First of all, today's saint is called James the Greater does not mean greater in holiness or better, but rather greater because he was taller than St. James the Less, and the apostles needed a way to differentiate between the two apostles who were both named James. He was one of the very first disciples of our Lord. His brother was St. John the Evangelist, St. John the Beloved. And John and Andrew had been two disciples of St. John the Baptist. And when our Lord came to be baptized, John the Baptist pointed him out. And he said to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Well, two of his disciples, Andrew and John, went up to our Lord and said, Master, where do you dwell? And he said, Come and see. And it says in the Gospel, they stayed with Him all day that day and listened to Him. And they went back and told their brothers, we have found the Messiah. Well, Andrew's brother was named Simon, later named Peter by our Lord. And of course, John's brother was James. And later, when our Lord was walking by the Sea of Galilee, He saw them there after the coming in from fishing or preparing to go out fishing. And He first said to Andrew and Simon, come follow Me. And they left their nets and they followed Him. And He walked on a little farther and He saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And they were there mending their nets with their father. And He turned to them and He said, Come, follow Me, and I will make you fishers of men. And it says in the Gospel, they left their nets and their father and they followed our Lord. So the first four apostles... And three of those four, Peter, James, and John, became known as the uh, chosen apostles. They were privileged beyond the others. James, the greater, along with his brother John and Simon Peter, 
were privileged to witness the transfiguration of our Lord on Mount Tabor. They were privileged to witness our Lord raising the daughter of Jairus from the dead and to witness his agony in the garden. So they were privileged beyond the others. Later, when the apostles were designated by St. Peter, their particular mission field, St. James the Greater was assigned Spain and traveled all the way to Spain and he preached among the Spanish people the faith, but met with very little success. And according to tradition, he baptized only seven persons. Even though many others listened to his preaching, they were not ready to be baptized. They did not, did not fully accept the faith at that time. Later, the faith spread throughout Spain. But after he was there, he received a message, or perhaps an interior enlightenment, that he should return to Jerusalem. And we believe this was about 11 years after the ascension. And while he was there visiting with the other apostles who had also come there, he was arrested by Herod and put to death, beheaded. Thus, he was the first of the 12 apostles to suffer martyrdom and the only one to be in heaven when Our Lady ascend, uh, was assumed into heaven and thus was there to greet our Blessed Mother. So St. James was certainly unique in many respects. But an interesting thing about his tomb, which is in Compostela, Spain, is that it became a favorite place of pilgrimage in the Middle Ages. So much so that highways were built just for the pilgrims who were going to Compostela from France, from Spain, uh, from, from Germany, from Italy, from Switzerland, and other countries. It, the pilgrimage were, pilgrimages were so many so many people that went to Compostela. And why? Why was it so famous? Because there were so many miracles granted at the tomb of St. James the Greater. And so it seems that God compensated him for the lack of reception that he received when he went to spread the gospel, that after his death, there were many conversions to the faith and also cures at his tomb. One lesson we can learn from St. James is that when we labor to spread the faith, when we labor to promote the faith to others, our reward is not going to be contingent upon how many people are converted. God will reward our labors even if no one is converted. God will reward our love for the faith and our desire to spread it our desire to bring about the salvation of other souls. So the reward is not dependent upon the results, but it is dependent upon the labors and the efforts that are undergone. We also, also can learn from St. James the importance of loyalty to Christ and perseverance to the end. Like the other apostles, he was a martyr, and thus we wear red vestments on his feast. But all of the apostles remind us of the love that we must have for our Lord, for our faith, always standing up for our faith, never wavering, never denying our faith, being willing rather to be put to death than to ever deny our precious faith. Let us honor this great apostle and all of the apostles and pray to them for the grace to persevere in living our Catholic faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.